Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I've received some emails and messages from photographers asking me to do more videos on Exposure X7. That's what I'm going to be doing today. One complaint I often hear from photographers concerning Exposure X7 is that it can be difficult to adjust the tone. Specifically, it's very difficult at times to get a white and a black point. In today's video, I'm going to give you a tip on how to get a better white and black point in Exposure X7 so that you could more easily and effectively adjust the tone of an image. The main problem where this happens is in an image that is a little bit underexposed. For this example, I have this image, and you can see it's a little bit underexposed because I exposed for the sky. I didn't want these brightest parts of the sky to blow out, so I exposed for the sky. That resulted in the rest of the image being rather underexposed. So typically, let's say I was in Lightroom, I'd go to the Basic tab and I'd go to the Shadows slider and I'd move it to the right. And you could see with Exposure X7 when I move it to the right, it doesn't do a lot. It kind of gives the image kind of a matte look. And then if I go to Highlights and try to tweak those up, and then I want to adjust whites and blacks to try to get a white and black point, it just doesn't look right. It's difficult to do. So I'm going to reset this. What I found is that if you have an image like this in Exposure X7, you should use the tone curve to get your white and black point first. So that's what I'll do. Before I do any adjustments at all, I'll jump right to the tone curve. And then what I want to do is I want to grab this uh, eyedropper that's on the far left. And you can see when you hover over it, you get a a tip here select a point in the preview window that will become pure black so we're going to click this and activate it so the cursor turns into that eyedropper now you don't have to click on something in the image that is actually pure black in the scene it's just something that once you're done adjusting the image it's probably going to be pure black in your adjusted image for me it will probably be this panel that's up here on the lighthouse that's probably the darkest part of the image, and that will probably be pure black when I'm done adjusting. So I'll click right on that. Now you can see the tone adjusted. Now next to that is a mid-tone um, eyedropper. Skip that one. Go right to the highlights. We're adjusting the black and the white point. So go right to the far right, and you can see that select a point in the preview window that will become pure white. So click on that and activate it. And obviously that's going to be one of the clouds. And the brightest clouds are over here on the left. So I'm going to click on one of these. And now you can see the tones adjusted. Now it's not ready to go. It's not perfect. But that gives us now a better starting point. So now when I go to the basic tab and the shadows are dark, I'll open those up. And you can see it's starting to look much better. I'll bring, not that much, bring the highlights down a little bit. Then I could bring up the whites a little bit and the blacks down a little bit. And if I want to add a little contrast, I could add a little contrast with the contrast slider. I don't care for dynamic contrast in most instances. I don't just, it seems to be a little bit strong for me. So I won't use that, but I will go to clarity and vibrance, a little vibrance. So you could see, I think you could see, I hope you could see that if you go to the tone curve first and get your white and black point using those eyedroppers, um, I think you'll be better able then to adjust the tone in any image in Exposure X7. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.